Welcome back, everybody, to The First Watch. We are excited to have everyone joining us here for episode, what is this, five now? Oh my gosh. Uh, as our characters get into the thick of the plot. Uh, my name is Andrew Coons. I'm the Dungeon Master for our adventures. Very excited uh, to be here tonight. And we're going to popcorn around and introduce ourselves for anyone just joining us for the first time. So let's go to Dana. Hey, I'm Dana. Um, I will be playing Artemis Valor, Asimar Wizard, and you can find me on Twitter at a bit meddlesome. And I'll popcorn it to Joe. Hey, everybody. I'm Joe. I'm playing the uh, Earth Genasi Artificer Malachite. Um, and you can find me on Instagram at JoeFrankDP. And I will throw it to Cheryl. That's me. Hi, I'm Cheryl. Uh, I'm playing Pry, the tiefling rogue. We both use she, her pronouns. And you can find me on the internet variously as the roving naturalist or running the Nature Check D&D show. Uh, and I will send it to Casey. Yo, what's up, guys? I am Casey. I am playing Oranis, the half-elf bard. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Casey McNeil and on Instagram at underscore Casey McNeil. And I'm going to throw it to Blake, obviously. Hey yo, I'm Blake. I'm playing Grokus Darkbringer, uh, the cleric dwarf of the party. Um, and you can find me at Blake C. Francis um, on Twitter. And then, yeah, and looking forward to this. So excited. And our intrepid uh halfling ranger artificer uh peony played by darby will not be with us tonight um darby at least will not but uh peony will still be around i'll be kind of puppeteering um that pc in the background uh for anything that the party needs uh this taking evening. hit points yes exactly yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> meat oh shield sorry darby. <laughs> meat shield. the halfling runs to the front and throws her arms wide and oh, says, no take me first <laughs> 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 a couple quick announcements um please make sure to uh follow on all the socials if you prefer the show in podcast format we do have a podcast and we also have a spin-off podcast on its own channel called the inn at the edge of greenwood where we interview various creators and ttrpg players in character um as they bring one of their characters from their adventures to our inn our virtual inn and tell a story of their adventures so check that out one we have so many amazing guests on there um another quick announcement I because I think this will be coming out in time for this to make sense. Um, Gen Con, several of us are going to be at Gen Con in Indianapolis in August, including myself, KC, Cheryl, Darby, who's not here, but will be there, uh, and Joe uh, as well. So we're going to have a very big contingent from the first watch there. So uh, we don't have a booth or anything, but please come and say hi if you see one of us. And it should we're be easy to find KC. Characters. <laughs> What's that? And we're going to cosplay our characters. Some of us will. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it should be easy to find us because Casey, as I understand it, stands heads and shoulders above the rest of us. So just follow him and the rest of us kind of like around. <laughs> um, so <laughs> it's, it's true. Uh, all right. Well, with that, we're going to hop into the first watch. So let's roll that intro sequence. After the combat with Robat's crew, uh, the party fled the scene 
with most of the assailants either dead or incapacitated. Daisy May stayed behind in order to uh, kind of clean up after the mess and uh, take care of the prisoners that uh, she had taken uh, in the form of Gormer and her gang members. You all booked it through the streets of Lower Floros, weaving in between buildings and alleyways, trying to become unseen as you heard the sound of guards and people beginning to converge on the battle site behind you at the docks. Eventually, you made your way back to the safe house that Daisy May had shown you, just a dilapidated warehouse that no one was using that she had camped out in, um, and you all went back there in order to lay low for a little while. You were not alone, however, as in the warehouse, a squatter had uh, already taken uh, taken residence in the form of a grung named Greta, uh, who was very suspicious and distrusting, uh, but through the use of some gold uh, to bribe her, eventually uh, came to at least share the space with you and give you a little bit of information. You all sat around made plans, figured out what to do next, and upon deciding that the next best step is to head to the Dwarven Mine that is just on the outskirt of town in order to hopefully find some technology or weaponry or magic that can give you a leg up in uh, your troubles, um, and also you know scrounging for the part that you need to repair the broken co construct that's back down south in Grispin Hills, you all decided going to the mine was the best course of action. If I'm remembering correctly, the plan was for Pry to assume the role of a noble, uh, for some of you to kind of fall in step as her troop and servants, uh, and Greta specifically was made invisible, correct? In order Hunter's to... Hunter's Mark clutch yep. move by... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Darby uh, yeah, yeah, cast yeah, yeah. Hunter's Mark. Follow. Yeah. Yep, yep. And the, the ruse is like a if there's trouble kind of thing, like a Ideally, we'll just be able to leave, you know, without any trouble. But yeah. like, if somebody were to start asking questions, we have this story ready. Because I know Ronis is in like looking like a, a butler, right? And then oh, Gorgas what was the name? Like a butler. And Grogus, I'm just more my cleric robe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Giant Bartholomew. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Oh no. This is a real Aronis. This is a real character, you guys. He's been playing someone else this whole time. Right. <laughs> uh, all right. So it is mid to late afternoon. Uh, after you all have actually no, because you stayed the night, and so because mm -hmm. uh, we got that rest, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like early to mid morning at this mm -hmm. point yes. um, on the next day, and no trouble came to you in the night's watch. Uh, a couple drunks and people kind of stumbled by, but um, no, no buddy trying to get in or whatnot. One other development that I did forget to bring up, um, as a good reminder, is that Aronis, you found a sword in the back of the warehouse that mm. was magical. Um, however, the properties of which uh, Artemis was unable to kind of decipher. And so you know it has a magical aura about it. Um, it is a long, uh, curved, uh, what would be what would be called a shamshir. Um, I, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, apologies if not, uh, but it's kind of like a Persian blade, one-handed blade with a very long curved uh, saber, scimitar-like like blade. Um, very flowy, very adapted cutting, um, and yeah, it is a, a magical uh, weapon. Hopefully not cursed, <laughs> just kidding. Oh gosh. Please. All right, so Greta has been made invisible. Peony has marked Greta with Hunter's Mark before going invisible so that uh, she was able to, to get that mark on. And with that can kind of roughly compass point to where Greta is in case you were all to get separated. And you all step into the streets of Floros in your disguises for some or, or just kind of different garb for others. Where are you headed? Um, I think we're following, right? Following. <laughs> I thought, um, had we planned to get the wagon first, just in case we needed it? Yeah. I feel like yeah, that's, we, that's a good idea. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if we didn't, I mean... <laughs> That'd be bad. No, we did plan on that. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> sure. yeah. It's Malachite's wagon, so he's going to get it back. Okay. Right, Where yeah, you, you don't want to just, like, leave it. Yeah. 
Uh, where did you leave the wagon? Was it at the the Golden Sail? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, because so I then... drove it from. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it's there. At the and Golden Malachi, Sail. you you can probably go alone that since I don't think they ever were aware of you. So you definitely are the more. That's true. Er Less conspicuous. Yep. So. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, so yeah, should we just head there and you can just go in by yourself, I guess, and we'll hang back. Mm -hmm. Keep and an eye. Yeah. All right. Cool. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. You all head across town towards the Golden Sail. Um, give me another, just real quick here, just a recap and everything. Give me a description of what everybody's disguises or just kind of oh. changes to, to the way they're carrying themselves are. And robes and my clerk kind of just um, big gray robes. Big enough to hide my my paunchy belly, so yeah. <laughs> I think Artemis would just like have a hood up and is kind of next to Pry as like a lady in waiting type scenario. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Pry has on like a blouse and a skirt, and she's sort of like done her hair up. So yeah. Uh, Aranis is just full butler, like monocle, top hat, white gloves, like walking with his hands like this nose the monopoly up. man <laughs> exactly yes there we go perfect <laughs> just like that yes Amazing. Amazing. we were going for inconspicuous <laughs> yeah we'll see whether you collect two hundred dollars or if you go straight to jail <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> episode name straight to jail <laughs> straight to jail and i'll grows also a shrew bird on his head because he hasn't worn it around town so Okay. I'll make sure we get some. He needs a little sunlight too. So. Okay. So the the shrub, mm -hmm. the awakened shrub, is there, just kind of gently moving on top of your your bald head. Uh, and Malachi, any changes to your garb? No, since I need to go get the wagon, I'll just stay in my normal appearance. Okay. Sounds good. You all head that direction. Um, can I get a group? performance check please oh i mean yeah. as you oh, just yeah. try to don't be suspicious don't be suspicious <laughs> I ooh, think. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> advantage uh, yep. two. oh yeah. yeah awesome got that too heck yeah okay coming in hot with a uh, that's I mean, an 18 20 like no to pretend he's just he's a cleric he's like yeah. think, <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, all right, so just kind of go around real quick. Uh, Aranis? 28. 28. Grokus had a 2. Pry? 21. 21. Artemis? 19. 19. Malachite? 19. 19. Okay. Well, okay Y'all kind of surround Grokus a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and make up for the fact that he's like... And I don't even get it. I don't even get I'm like looking around like, what? what what's, why is everyone surrounding me? What's... What? <laughs> But yes, very good, oh. very, very good performance <laughs> checks. You all walk through the street carrying yourselves with an air of importance, and you know you're driven. Um, Pride taking the lead, um, and kind of uh, everybody else in tow. So you all look like a like a pretty cohesive troop. A uh, couple people get out of your way as you go. A um, couple guards give you a you know a little bit of a lingering look, um, but just mm, shrug. Some some noble in town, not not much different than any other day. Um, and eventually you find yourself coming up on the golden sail with its large yellow tattered faded sail uh, as its sign, um, kind of gently moving in, in a little bit of a breeze that's that's come in off the coast today. Uh, there is a stable behind it where you would have dropped off your um, your carriage and your horses. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just head that direction without any hesitation or anything. Just okay. go right towards the stable. Okay. Are you guys sure we don't want to meet Bro about I mean, is there one, we're definitely in agreement. We don't want to do that, right? We're not. You don't want to meet him now? You... Well, I think when we get the, um, the big guns is when we should go see him. Yes. Oh. Big guns. The construct, as it were. <laughs> Um, oh, I get it. Okay. I see what you're doing there. Okay. 
He's, he thinks he's yeah. in character, you guys. He's in character. I get it. Uh, right. I've been to a theater or two myself. Uh, oh, my God, I'm getting caught. Hey. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, my <laughs> Okay, oh so Malachi, you go around the back and <laughs> working in the stables, um, kind of shoveling hay into the different um, stalls for the horses, uh, you see a Triton man, thin build, a um, little bit younger, um, and you recognize him as the, well, actually, would you? Were you, you weren't there for Aronis' performance. Um oh. Go ahead and just make a make a history check for me. Um, see whether or not you recognize this guy from just being generally in the area. He was with us the second time, right? Yeah. Because we all went the... back there in the, for breakfast, or? Mm, that's true. He was there with us yeah. for that. Yeah. Uh, I rolled a 10. A 10 total? Yeah. This guy looks familiar. He probably works here. You don't recall okay. exactly where you saw him, but he looks familiar. All right, I'll just walk up to him and... Hey there, buddy. Uh, left oh, my, hello. My, my cart here. Uh, just oh. come to pick it up. Uh, certainly. Um, is it the the the, the four wheeled or the two wheeled one? Uh, I think it's four wheel. Yes. Yeah, four wheel. Okay. Um, right. Which uh, <laughs> which horses were yours? Do you have the Do you have the 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 stabling slip? Yeah. I just pull that out. Okay. Show it to him. Looks at the little piece of paper real quick. Okay, yeah. Um, give me like 15 minutes or so. Um, I can have them uh, brushed down and, and hooked up for you and ready to go. Yeah, um, <clears throat> as quick as you can, honestly. You don't need to brush them down. I'll, I'll take care of that later, so. All right. Um, you still going to need a few minutes, but I'll get it right on it. Sounds good. He kind of sticks his, uh, his pitchfork in the hay, and you see him and walk over and throw open a door and start to lead one of your horses out and then the other um, getting them hooked up to the to the wagon. It's going to take probably five, ten minutes to, to kind of hook everything up. Yep. Uh, while Malachite is in there, can I do a perception check to see if there are any people with the tattoos that mm -hmm. I noticed just yeah. walking around at all? If I notice there's nothing to tap and give a bless. Okay. Um, guidance, gonna cast guidance, so top. Okay. Sure. That's a thirteen plus a D four. Uh so eighteen. Eighteen total. Um yeah. you look around and it's kind of a similar situation as the last time where just people have tattoos, like a lot of people have tattoos in this town. Uh, hard to see. Um, you don't see anybody immediately just kind of walking around that, that has them. Um, but you do know that like Gormers was under her collar. Daisy yeah. Mays was behind the, the shirt on the shoulder. They, they, you get the they idea that them. they tend to have them in places where they're not super obvious until yeah. revealed. Anybody else doing anything while you wait for Malachi? All right. Probably saying a quick prayer, just um, yeah, just thinking about things. Um, yeah, going over some new new feelings I've, I've gotten. Some um, maybe some new abilities, kind of just um, bring about too. So yeah. Yeah. You spend a little bit of moment with some incantations and some connection uh, meditation. Uh, everybody else waits. And for too long, Malachite, the horses are ready. Um, and the, the Triton man leads them over. He's like, um, here you go, sir. Um, hope you enjoyed your stay at the Golden Sail. Thanks. Appreciate it. I hand him a tip. How much do you give him? Uh, 400 gold. You give uh, him no, 400 no, gold? Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, wait, her, her. You said that so straight faced. I know. I was like, do, are you, do you want another NPC to join the party? <laughs> yeah. Bless them all. I'll, uh, I'll give him a gold. Okay. It takes oh, it. Man. Thank you, sir. And pockets it and just goes back to shoveling. Um, Artemis, you get a little tug on your shoulder or on your, on your sleeve a little bit and you look down in peonies 
just kind of there, just kind of like bouncing on her heels. Like, are we, uh, are we done yet? Oh, we're waiting for Melody. <laughs> it's going to be a while. Could we like go to the beach first and then maybe come back? <gasps> oh, oh no. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> okay, fine. <Very> quiet. <laughs> Greta went over that way, by the way. She went over where? Which way? Oh, over there, around the corner of the building. Okay. Does she does she know that we stopped? Like Greta, or is she just oh, like, Greta's invisible, you don't know. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Peony's the only one who can kind of keep tabs on her with Hunter's mark. I mean oh, we had told her that we were getting the wagon. Uh -huh. So I feel like Okay, good. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, she but... was with us and then we stopped, and then she was here, and then she went around the corner, I think. Maybe. Okay, okay. Good to know. Yeah. Do we have time to go to the bakery? Probably not, and I feel like you've had enough sugar for today. Oh, I don't think so. Okay. Oh, I think so. <laughs> I mean, pastry's not a bad idea. I mean, okay. but yeah, we yeah we shouldn't we should we don't time. Yeah, you're right. No, I mean, <laughs> still just grumbles like yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Malika, you come around the corner, uh, and see everybody waiting for you, and he has the cart. Yep. Alright, hop in. Or, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Aranis will climb in the, in the back. Okay. I will ride on the seat next to Malika. Okay. I'll get in the back as well. Peony oh, gets in. Yep. Are there, like, multiple rows of seats, or it's like, it's just, like, one big... Uh, it's mostly an open uh, cart, and there are like kind of like two bench seats that run the length of it on the sides. Um, but there's nothing like in the middle, like it's for storage areas. Okay. So we'll Y'all feel after everybody gets in, you feel a brief like shift of the cart, and you don't see any reason for it. Um, but Peony just goes, "Oh, hi, you're back." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Off mine. Yep. Giddy up. You send the horses on their way and begin heading what would be north uh, towards the, towards, yeah, the north outskirt of the city. Mm -hmm. Any other stops you're planning on making before going to the mine? Anything else you want to do? Or are we just going to kind of fast travel to there? Mm. I mean... Did, <laughs> yep. did we talk about me going to the artificers guild to see if they have any parts or did we decide not to do that we camera? did i, I think we, we definitely talked about it um well, i think we know that it's not like a full on like artificer place right it's only it's kind of like yeah. a yeah have to order the piece mm -hmm. oh yes yeah. yeah also who made greta invisible was that a artemis thing uh no i think it was aranis i don't think it was me no. Was it me? I feel. I definitely like it... don't have invisibility. This is going to be an important detail here in a minute. It must so... have been me then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I also, I have. Oh. I think I have invisibility. I, have okay. invisibility. I think that was me because I'm missing. I only have two uh, second level spell slots. Okay. Great. Yeah. Because so I, think... I need okay. one spell slot for disguise self. Yeah. And that's yeah. Why I have yeah. So okay. it was me. So at this point. Um, invisibility lasts for an hour. So you're about 40, with, mm. with kind of casting it, getting there, getting the cart, leaving, you're about 45 minutes into that first hour. Um, okay. You are rolling we... the cart, and, and but, but Greta will become visible probably in the next 15 minutes. Would we would we need Greta to become invisible then if we knew we were getting the cart? I mean, we just won't be seen with, with them, right? Okay, so I guess it doesn't make sense. Yeah, she just doesn't okay. want to be seen. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. We could always act like she's invisible. <laughs> After she turns not invisible and make the. <laughs> That's what Aronis is going to do. So. Okay. <laughs> so we don't have to use another spell slot. Later, she's like, So I was invisible that whole time, right? Nobody could see me. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Groups will just stay quiet. <laughs> um. All right. So you're headed back to the Artificers Guild on the second shelf? Um, would that be backtracking from yes, where we are? Very much so. That would be up a level all the way across the city, 
um, towards the south. Is the church on that level too? That I stopped by before is it a second level too? No, or the no? church that you stopped by, the Temple of Boreador, was on the on the lower shelf. Um, there's a church well, to Adeline on the top shelf, but all the other places of worship are on the lower shelf. Is that right. the one we're on? Okay. Yeah. So here's the deal. We can go to the Artificers Guild, but I I know that this is more of an outpost. Um, he's not going to have a ton of stuff in stock. Um, so, I mean, it might be worth asking him if he has any leads on any, uh, where, you know, somewhere else we could find one, but that would be the only thing. And I don't know if we want to risk staying in the city that much longer. It's up to you guys. I would say we head out of the city. As well. I mean, it's possible in the mines we could find, we could salvage the parts from other constructs. But I mean, if you want to check the city, I mean, there's no point. I mean, there's no real, I mean, super, super quick rush to get out. So, I mean, if you need to get time, we can definitely stay up longer. And if you run into certain people, so be it. So, mm. I mean, we can, I am bored of saying, I think it's wise to check all our avenues. It's always good to make sure we go through and to make the most, the best, and the balance, the best balance decisions we can make, so, but. Ivanis, uh, what happened to the Minotaur? <laughs> well, I would imagine he is, um, dead from drowning, I, I presume. <laughs> Hopefully. Is that what happened, Andrew, that he just, like, drowned at the oh end of the spell? Oh my god. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. You did not feel it end prematurely. Oh. No! He's agree not and dead. Agree and He's went, not dead. Not dead. I'm going to find him. <laughs> I think he'll find us. That's why I asked. Okay. Oh, snap. Okay. He's now my nemesis. Good. Good, okay. good, 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 good. Amazing. Wow. <sighs> there are several you know, scenarios what? that could have played out. You don't know. He'll come back and he's leveled up like six times. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's just a zombie minotaur now. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's fine. Uh, Even better. Like, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. true. <laughs> but like I said, my vote is to stay, but I mean, what is. I think everyone else wants to. Probably did you want to. What did you think about this? Should we check out the artificer, see if you know if that's any. Oh, I do not really know anything about all of this construct business. Uh, I really just want to be wherever my elk can be useful, so. Peony just goes, I want to go to the mines. <laughs> I concur. I think the mine is uh, where we should go. I think that's I think that kind of tilts it into that into that favor. So I guess uh, I guess we're going to the mines. Hmm. Well, Come on, Crocus, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, seeing a whole bunch of stuff from people that I don't really know anymore about my people that I can't really don't have a real connection to, but I'm sure it'll be fun. Like seeing ghosts, you know, fun. Well, if you're a cleric, if you see a ghost, can't you just make it and go away? I mean, yeah, I mean, I can send it on, so, yes, I mean, so to speak, yes. But not that I enjoy seeing them, though, I mean, it's sometimes they're not the most, um, not the most happy, usually when they're around like that, it's not for a good reason, why they're lingering still, but... Angry yeah. ghosts. Yeah. I'm fighting for my life here, y'all, trying to do a peony impersonation. <laughs> I feel like it's doing okay. It's pretty, <laughs> good. It's pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's. I think it's. You know. <laughs> yeah. Mines. Fine. Sounds good. All right. Steer the cart that direction. Um, 
there's not signage that says the mine is this way. Uh, <laughs> however, you know the general direction and it's easy enough to, to stop a person or two along the way and just ask, you know, get, make sure you're going the right street or whatnot. Everybody knows where, everybody who lives here knows where the, the mine is. Several people work there. Um, and so without any hassle, really, you eventually come upon um, the north, would be the northeastern portion of the city. Um, anybody who wants to, go ahead and make a perception check just as you're riding, just to see what you see around, around town. Ooh, that's not bad. Oh, man. Perception. 11. Yeah, 22. 11? 22. Okay, it's okay. 13. Seven. Seven, okay. Not bad. Four, <laughs> okay. Um, Grokus, you... I mean, everybody, as you're looking around, general things as you see ship stocking, um, there's various people, you know, going to and from work. You notice that... Um, a lot of children are just kind of running around um typically like you would have met like their school age um but they don't seem to be in school at the moment um grokus you as you're kind of looking um you catch sight of a building that is a little kind of inconspicuous and tucked away but you you see a, a marking on it that looks kind of familiar to you just from your travels um and as you're kind of passing you crane your neck and look and you see um just a very plain sign on a on a kind of a long almost like hall type building like a like almost like a viking hall um style length building uh that just says uh realm shield on it and you would know, um, and pretty much everybody would know, um, that Realm Shield is the guild of monster hunters in Alson. Um, so they're the ones that, you know, they're kind of mercenaries, kind of rough and tumble. Um, if there's, you know, <laughs> uh, a, a, a troll incursion or, um, you know, some sort of big beast that gets let loose, they're the ones who kind of get sent after to go do the dangerous work and, um, and take it out without having to necessarily call upon the, the king's soldiers. Grogus is definitely pointing out because he's like an old man's pointing out everything like, oh, look at that and that. And Realms are right there. Ooh, I didn't know that they're in this town too. You know, like the, uh, I think they fight monsters and things of that nature. But, um, hmm. So. What? Oh, you're muted. Don't think we'll need them. I said good to know. <laughs> <laughs> so glad. So glad we unmuted you. Well, I thought it's interesting to me in their pretty well known group, so you know. <laughs> just have to look at the map. <laughs> this is like road tripping with my parents. Just right. like, no. Reading every sign. Every sign. <laughs> Everyone just, mm -hmm. yes. Love you, mom. Love you, dad. Uh, <laughs> you continue past and eventually you get to a point so there's no walls at this point of the city's edge it kind of just peters out right there's there's it, the streets get thinner um and and more bare the houses get farther apart and eventually you do see um some commotion up ahead uh just people moving about and working there um, and the road turns into a little bit more of a rough dirt path um from some of the the more kind of kept road uh of the city proper and you begin to come up on the entrance to the silver mine here in Floros. Um, what you see is a kind of a kind of a, a larger hill um, or um, a barrow, um, I think you might call it, um, in the ground. And there is a big opening of stone that it just leads down into this. You, you see actual stonework around it. Um, and it's a big opening. It's probably 20 feet wide by 15 feet tall, so a little bit longer um, than tall big enough to bring carts into and whatnot uh, and several people are kind of going back and forth um you see uh, probably a couple dozen various workers um who are gearing up and um, you see carts kind of coming out full of rubble and rock and whatnot uh and there is a uh a halfling man um who has these very kind of big thick bushy curled mutton chops um, and kind of a kind of a bushy tight curl of hair on the on the top, and he is uh, got a cl essentially a clipboard, um, you know, piece of wood with with some with some uh, some parchment on it, and he is 
talking kind of loudly and directing folks and um, making notes and people are coming up and asking questions probably like a foreman or something here at the at the dig site uh greta is this the way in uh greta would have become visible by now fyi so what is the plan there <laughs> oh my gosh just not looking at her <laughs> oh Greta, well, there you are so i'll know when the spell ends. yes you would know you would feel it yeah yeah so i'll maybe like right before it ends if i can i'll just kind of like turn to her and be like hey do you want me to like renew this or what's the deal all uh, right need to not be seen one way or the other anyone got a cloak yeah, if we could figure something else out, that'd be good. Uh, she can use my cloak, my coat. Okay. It'll she... be really big, but yeah. Oh, she <laughs> she hides under it. She literally blanket forts herself <laughs> at the bottom of the of the the wagon and just. <laughs> Once she does that, I just manually release the spell. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yes, asking Greta if this is the right place, and you just see like, and like one big eye kind of pops out <laughs> and looks. He's like, this is the mine. And back underneath. Well, yes, but is this the way we should try to get in? There are a lot of people here. Mm -hmm. I don't know another way in. You could ask for directions. Mm. Are there any secret entrances? I always came, I always come into the dead of night when no one's here. What if we get to know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what it cost two gold at least? Really <laughs> yeah. Is the, is the guy close by that we see? Uh, he's still several dozen yards away. So I mean, he's not making notice of you or anything. Um, and there's a lot of commotion and noise. Like even if you shouted, I don't know that you would. He would hear you necessarily. I mean, I can go talk to him. I mean, I don't have a problem. Uh, going. Why don't we stick together and we will try to just get in as a group uh, with the wagon, without the wagon? Uh, big enough for the wagon. Will it be okay. safe in a, in a mine? I mean, is that. Was that. Yeah, that... yeah uh, will the horses be all right? Uh, uh, maybe a tight maybe. squeeze. I feel. Yeah, it could could get dicey. I mean, maybe we should just leave it out here somewhere. I mean, the last mine we were in, it was got pretty uh, fitting into a mine cart. I don't think a horse could fit into one, and yeah, it was. Yeah, that's a really uh, funny image. Just uh, sitting, <laughs> yeah, on a horse on a mine cart <laughs> with the carriage. <laughs> <laughs> we carried somehow. Are there like are there wagons and stuff like parked out? You do see some wagons um kind of off to the side a little ways. Um and what's happening is that smaller carts and like that are being manually pulled um and wheelbarrows and stuff are being pulled out, dumped, people are sifting and sorting kind of big chunks and like pulling out. And even from this distance, you see some chunks come out with a little bit of a glint um, as a vein of silver, you know, and they, they'll toss that into a larger cart. Um, so they're they're beginning the process of kind of sorting through things and, and loading up carts in order to take back to the city. OK, so a bunch of you are very smart and know a lot about these dwarven artifacts, yes? Well, or less. I'm super smart and I know all about everything dwarven well so um. the best lies are the closest to the truth so why don't we say that you are a troop of anthropologists uh, studying the dwarves and i am your wealthy benefactor and then we can go in we are anthroporopus close enough mm. <laughs> i think that i shall do the talking then, yes. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Uh, uh, DM, uh, yeah. name of a wealthy family that would make sense to be patrons of this. Uh, the what Beckets. would I? The Becketts. Mm -hmm. 
uh, yes, uh, Ranis uh, or J- Jives? J- yes, Jives. <laughs> Jives. Uh, Jives, uh, you can. <laughs> Those are two first names. <laughs> Bartholomew Jives, yes. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't make it any better. <laughs> Give us voice. Uh, you can say that I am Lady Beckett. Right you, and I just walk over. Uh, Excuse me, sir. Real, real quick, Pry, make a history check. Oh, oh boy. Mm-hmm. Look at Artemis. I like this Neuronus. <laughs> history uh 15 yeah the beckett's are of a fairly prominent family the the duponts the beckett's the shoe uh family a um, couple others are, are some of the wealthier ones in excessa and and patrons of various technologies and arts mm-hmm. um between the beckett's and the shoe family um you know it's kind of dealer's choice there you don't know of any other tieflings in these families. Yep, so, no, I, I got that part. <laughs> so just uh, just an FYI, as you looked past yourself off. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully um, they don't know that either. Okay. <laughs> are they, those are all human families though? I, the Becketts are human, the Shoe oh. family would be um, halfling. No, then we'll go with the Beckett's. Okay. I am not a halfling sized person. <laughs> Always married to the family. I mean, that's not uncommon. <laughs> sure, exactly. <laughs> All right, so Jives, you're headed to the foreman. Yes, uh, uh, good day, sir. He turns around. You can see he's like chewing on like tobacco or something. He's like, yeah, what do you want? Uh, yes, I am Jives Bartholomew. I am butler and majordomo to the but- Beckett family. Uh, this is Lady Beckett with me, and we have a group of anthropologists, archaeologists looking to study the dwarves. So if we could just pop on in and take a look, that would be uh, great. What? Thank you. Son, I don't understand half of the words that just came out of your mouth. Uh, us into uh, mine. You got now. papers? Uh, I, no, no, but I have the uh, the Lady Beckett, and I know um, a little bit of power there, yes. She uh, looks so real pretty. Just... Ask right. her if she's got papers. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything we can forge as papers? Do we have anything prepared? Anything roguish? It's, look here, <laughs> look here, look here, son. <laughs> everybody, everybody who comes in and out of here is on my crew, and... We get these city folk coming in every once in a while wanting to get, you know, kind of in on the action and whatnot. You can go talk to the Chamber of Commerce and get yourself a a, a deed of, 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 of ownership to the mine if you want. But unless you've got papers or unless I'm paying you, I'm not just letting people go in the mine for no reason. It's dangerous down there and I want you in the way of my men. Um, well, uh, what would your fee be, uh, say you were to hire us? Uh... You know, just to, to get us in there. It's two gold a day for an honest day's work. Two gold. And yes. you're not going to want to wear that. And he kind of points to your very fancy attire. <laughs> uh, you can if you want, but it's going to get shredded here in about 30 minutes of hard work. <laughs> um, yes, I left my um, other outfit in the in the cart. Uh, okay. I will change as soon as we um, get in there. Um, working man to working man. I mean, you just know how these noble people are. If you could just do me a favor to just, uh, in, in we go, boom, boom, and out. Just about an hour or so, just for a, a look-see-loo. Um, we won't um, get into any Why danger. Why don't I just tell you? <sighs> Make uh, a- I- Go ahead. I was going to say, I'm hovering like a few feet behind Aranis, and okay. I was hoping to use my feature in this moment. What so. feature is that? Oh, people are inclined to think the best of you. You are welcome in high society. People assume you have the right to be wherever you are. The common folk make every effort to accommodate you and avoid your displeasure. Okay. So how yeah. do you flex that in this moment? Uh, I'm looking at him with that sort of like pre-Karen moment look, Uh right? Where it's like, I'm waiting for you to make a stupid choice. If you make me unhappy, you're going to be unhappy too, kind of dealio, yeah. You would not like her when she's angry, sir. Look, I got a business run here. Um, 
make a make a persuasion check. I'm gonna. I was gonna say disadvantage, but I'll say that pride cancels that out because that I want to honor that feature. Hey. Okay, that's a sixteen. That's good. Uh, let's see. Oh wait, I have advantage too because I'm playing a character. Well, no, you you had disadvantage and then you got advantage oh, yeah, yeah, pride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Right. Um, so yeah, 16 plus, you said persuasion, Yeah, is 10, so 26. 26, okay. <laughs> Out of curiosity. Okay. Okay. He kind of looks back and forth and goes, look, folks, um, I, I appreciate the fact that you're, you're interested in what's down there. It's, it's damned interesting, that's for sure. There's lots of interesting things there, but we are trying to run a business here, and I honestly do not want anyone getting crushed by any of the equipment. Or getting in the sure, way of it's, any it's of okay. I mean, I'm actually, a, as you can see, I'm actually used to this kind of stuff. So I'll be sure to. I'm kind of. You full blown dwarf? Uh, yes. yes. Wow. Yep. Knock my Rubber socks off. That's nice quite to, interesting. Nice to meet you. Oh, gee, you don't. Own, you own this mine or something? No, I mean, uh, well, <laughs> it could be related to um, someone in my family. So. That is to say, that's what I'm kind of searching for to see if any any remains or anything else like that. Look, and I'll, tell the truth, because it's, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, I'll, I'll cut straight to the chase here for you. I'm not letting you in there while my men are working, but God looks around, looks up at the sun. Everybody goes on lunch break in about an hour's time. And it's going to be about 45 minutes to an hour where we're not going to be having machines moving in and out. So... You want to poke your head in, take a little look at some runes and whatnot. You can go. You're not going to want to go farther than the first tunnel, but poke your head in, and I'll have one of my people with a torch there to kind of show you about. Thank you. But then you got to get out because we got work to do after that. I'm sorry. Of course. All right. Anything else I can do for you? Uh, no, sir. Thank you very, very much. Uh, have a balanced day. <laughs> you too, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, do Hashtag, balance. The cart. Hashtag balance. Hashtag <laughs> balance. Uh, he turns around and just continues shouting orders to people, making notes and whatnot. Okay. So is that does it start? Certainly something. I wonder if there is a way we can give them the slip to keep going. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the last time we went, I mean, if you want to go that deep into the mining, mean, last time wasn't didn't end the best. I almost met Enor. A few times. Um, and I think oh, miss Scott, so maybe I don't. Well, I'm, I think we're a little bit better prepared with the um, the artificer ranger and the uh, actual artificer. I, I'm just an artificer. I don't know what you're talking about. Who's a ranger? What are yes. you a ranger? Oh, yes. Malachi, are you a ranger artificer? That's so cool. Indeed. Does that mean you can, like, shoot? bows, but they're like super crazy artificer arrows. Would well, you make me an awesome well, ranger arrow? I mean, you made, you made that awesome thing. I mean, you made the awesome thing for um, Greta, so maybe. I mean, I mean, you're the one with the bow with all the gears and stuff on oh, it. Oh yeah, but that's just that's just my artificer's bow. I hate to tell you this, but oh, artificers yeah. don't really use bows. Oh well, that's because I'm from the Axenhead Woods, and we just do things differently over there. Oh, well, that's fair. Not because you're a ranger, just just because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a ranger. <laughs> I'm an artificer. Yeah. Yeah, well, you are. You are an artificer. It's true. Yeah. How long does the okay. self last? Uh, an hour. 
<laughs> that Oops. Hour. So you're gonna have to bump that a second time. Well, he told you not to wear the same thing, so I mean, you could just be like taking his word, you know, like you're right. You need to wear something. Uh, yeah, I think I'll drop the disguise. I mean, obviously, because I have to, um, and just see if I can slip in when we go in at lunch. Okay, so you're just back to Aranus? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. You all wait, and eventually you hear um, a bell being rung, and people begin to slowly kind of come out of the mine one by one. Uh, and people are kind of straggling and whatnot, but um, you, you eventually see most people clear out and head a little ways away and sit down and begin opening up packed lunches and whatnot. Um, you know, big barrel of water is kind of like brought out and people kind of drink from that and everything and, and the, the, the crew begins to eat. Uh, the foreman is not around. There's no guide that's been left for you. Like... He doesn't seem to have remembered to, like, set you up or anything. I sweep confidently toward the opening of the mine. Yeah, uh, I think we can get in pretty quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Super uh, confident. Does, does it look pretty dark? Uh, there are torches that are set up kind of on the first inside. And as you get closer, you do see kind of sitting at a little makeshift desk um, off to the left-hand side in the entrance, just like maybe 10 feet into the entrance in some shadow, um, you do see uh, a, a young human man um, who has red hair and lots of freckles, and he is just sitting there working on kind of making notes and everything, and he looks very stressed. <laughs> he's very, like, like, really worried expression, and as you all get closer, he's like, oh, um... No, actually, I, I'm sorry. The, it, no one goes in during the lunch hour. As the foreman already gave us permission. Oh, uh, I don't have a note on that. And then he just kind of like stops and like, is, like is everything okay? Kind of collects himself and uh, no, yeah, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Um, I I haven't I didn't hear anything about that. I'm sorry. I don't have a note. I'm not supposed to let anybody in who. Who who doesn't have like who's not supposed to, official business and all that? I oh, I'm sorry. We, it's all right. You look like you are very busy, so I do not want to take up too much of your time. But uh, these fine people are scientists, and they are here to research all of the uh, remains from the dwarves. Uh, and we explained all of this to your foreman earlier. So uh, we are just going to be a little while. He said uh, it would be safe for us to enter during the lunch break. If you want us to go get the foreman and, and, you know, bump this up the chain of command, we can do that, but it seems like you've got a lot on your plate and it would just be yeah. easier if we could just get in. Can I insight check when he said it's okay? Like he's fine? Can I insight yeah, check Yeah, insight up? check, because actually, yeah, insight check. Nat 20, 27. Ooh. 27. Okay. Fire. Finally. In that moment, <laughs> in, in that moment and in this one, there is a... Like the stress, like kind of look is a little bit different, and he's more like he's staring at one of you, like just like. Can, can I see with my 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 past perceptions a only a seventeen? Can I see. Yeah, where well, you're, you're actively looking here. Yeah. You kind of follow the. You kind of look and hmm. You kind of follow the eyes, and he's just kind of like staring at Artemis, like with just kind of this like slightly dopey expression, and then. Hello. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that is, it's I'm sorry, there, but... Lad. That, that is no, really no, there, sorry, so... sorry, um... Uh, Something you need to say? No, no, sir. Um... Uh, I... I I guess I could go get the foreman and ask him if it's okay. Can you all just oh, wait here? A nudge Artemis. Oh, oh, just let us... in. And I just give him a little awkward wink. <laughs> Uh, he goes beat red. <laughs> he goes like his, you, his his you face and his ears just flush, cool. beat red immediately, and he's just, um. Uh, it's between uh, you and I. Go and make a persuasion check at advantage. Rokas <laughs> oh. is not happy. Or <laughs> he's not right for you. Rokas, mmm. Rokas is being about to get a spiritual, about to get spiritual hammer out here. Like, oh, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> I 
Artemis feels super awkward right now. Persuasion. Okay. 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 Better. Uh, seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah, he's like. 17. I'm sure it's fine. Just obviously, when you get to the end of the tunnel, like, don't go too close to the edge, because um, it's dangerous there. But um, I'm sure. Just if you could, if you could try to be out in like a few minutes, because I, I don't have the paperwork. Absolutely, and I just give him a pat on the head as I walk by. Huh. <laughs> he just kind of like melts a little bit. <laughs> mean mug, just getting mean mug, bro. Just like <laughs> daggers. <laughs> Aronis is going to fist bump him as he walks past. He, like, he doesn't actually look at you, he just... <laughs> <laughs> like, he just, like, eyes on Artemis the entire time. That's like, you hear, you, you all walk past, uh. and then you hear this crash as you look, and he's, like, tried to sit down in the seat, but, like, missed the seat and, like, <laughs> fell over. It's like, I'm fine, I'm fine. <sighs> Uh, what is what are you all doing with Greta? <laughs> She's just almost like in that cloak, just like. Uh, can I hide her in my cloak of billowing, like on my back? Can uh, it billow enough that she can? No, but we need we need her to guide, don't we? I mean, yeah, she can point where to go. Like Yoda. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would say that you could put her on your back. Make a make a stealth check real quick, just to like kind of get her hidden enough. Actually, you Sweet. know what? She's gonna make it. Okay, yeah, she's pretty well. She's she's small. She's very light, and you can just feel like her gripping, like onto the back of your shirt, and you can feel like her toes like gripping on the bottom of your shirt and just kind of like clinging there, like a like a Ooh. little koala or something. I definitely have the the drupal about too. Okay. Using the light cantrip with that. All right. So. You all leave behind the awkward doorman and descend down. It's it's a long kind of gradual gradient um, that goes into the darkness. As you enter in and the kind of sounds of outside disappear behind you. Uh, torches are are continued to be lit all the way down. It is it is their space quite a ways, but uh, there is dim ambient lighting. Like as you continue your way, um, eventually it'll it falls off into darkness, but you can kind of see little pinpricks of torch lighting. Um, everything is fairly well worn and traveled. Um, there's been a lot of foot traffic here, um, and Grocus, uh, as you look about you can see kind of the the telltale signs of carving and excavation from wherever this was originally built um there is kind of a not not perfect angles but there is an there's an angularity to things um that that is definitely not natural um and things are kind of smoothed out along the way however nothing along this initial entrance indicates that any actual mining was done here this is just an entry shaft um, there's no, like, offshoots yet or anything like that. Uh, Greta, do you know, uh, of any less explored areas of the mine that you've been to that maybe there are some metal things uh, hanging yeah. out? We gotta go in, we gotta go down, and then we gotta start going over. But the down, down part's, over. the down part's the hard part. Okay. So, uh, do we have to go? I mean, is there any other way we have to go down farther? All right, you'll see. Okay, well. Uh, yeah, I guess I walk in front and uh, let Greta kind of point the way. Now we're talking to Artemis, like Artemis. I mean, he's a nice guy, but I'm just, oh. I don't think that oh. he's, I don't think he's up to your level. I don't think, oh. you know, I'm just saying if you like him, that's, you know, Certainly not my type. <laughs> okay. Because that's, that's what I was thinking too, but I was going to say, you know, if you like him, you know, okay, well. He's going to fight that man. <laughs> <laughs> that poor kid. Oh my gosh. Wouldn't be much of a fight, but you know. <laughs> I mean, oh. haven't seen the side of grow kiss. <laughs> I want to see this fight now. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, you all continue down, and eventually you see ahead of you that the little pinpricks of light stop, um, and it just fades off into true darkness at that point. Groka stops for a moment, um, just like clutches a drift glow. It's fine. We'll be all right. Do I just, I mean, just, uh, just tired. It's a little, you know, it's, um, seems kind of dark, but, you know, we got, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Okay. Malachite has put his goggles on. Okay. Yeah, it looks very cool. Dark vision. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> As you all get a little closer, you can see between the ambient light of the torches, the drift globe, and uh, dark vision or what uh, other devices you have that what actually happens here is that everything goes forward and then there's a wall that's, you know, maybe 40 feet across a large pit. Everything just drops off. Um, as you get closer and look, the pit itself is about 40 foot around uh, diameter. Um, you look down and it goes beyond your vision. Um, however, there are kind of tacked into the walls along the way down, there are other torches um, that are lit, um, kind of in a spiral pattern all the way down. Um, you hear a little bit of a rustle and look up, and there is a pulley system that is attached to the ceiling over the top of the pit. And there are these big, thick ropes that go from a spot over to the side of the pit, up and over the pulley, and then they're currently pulled back around, and you know, so they kind of like come back to, and you see harnesses there for people to be let down. Um, there's also some large hooks where probably like different carts and, you know, buckets and whatnot are let down. But uh, the, this mine goes in and then whoo, straight down mine shaft. Anybody been spelunking before? It just it just pitch black down, like it goes down to just deep, just where there's other lights running down. There are some scattered torches tacked into the wall along the way down, so you see some ambient light, but then it goes beyond your sight. You don't see a floor or anything. It just goes into infinite blackness. Uh Greta, did you use the harnesses? Uh, well, not the harness, but dropped a rope down. There's areas down here where it offshoots to the side and you can go down. But I've not been down to the, the very bottom yet. Hmm. Mm. Uh, can you show us the way that you usually go down? Uh, yeah. Um, she kind of plop, plop, plop over and grabs a big, thick rope and, uh, and, uh, and uh, knocks it over the side. Um, and as it goes, because it's attached to a pulley that's in the middle, it actually swings out into the middle of the pit, about 20 feet out. And then as it swings back, she leaps and whoo, grabs the rope and is kind of swinging out there in the middle and then begins to just go and go down. Okay. There is no, no way in NR. No. Artemis is taking out her broom no. and like, like, I can ferry some of us down. Ooh, uh, I, Aranis is going to take out the cone of slimming, mm -hmm. throw it on his head, and just jump out. You're going to float. Oh, oh yeah. my slide. gosh. Hold on a second. I'm going to grab, I'm gonna grab down him. I'm going like to grab a piece of paper. I'm you gonna are. Grab him before he just floats off. Like, I'm going to make a grab for him. Okay. Make a dexterity saving throw because Aranis has just turned into a leaf on the wind. And we oh, all know how that is. How ended. dare you? How <laughs> fucking dare you? That's a go. That Gotta keep up the oh man, a deck save. Oh, it's a four. Uh, you reach out and you miss him. Short arms. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I feel that, man. <laughs> Geronimo, but it doesn't like drift away because I'm still going really slow. So I kind of just run out of breath before I finish. <laughs> like that didn't work out like I thought it would. But. You are flat and kind of floating like a large piece of paper, which, okay, if you took a large canvas and threw it out, it'd still fall pretty fast, and you're kind of getting, like, flopped around and stuff oh like that. Oh, my gosh. So, Can yeah, I you dive are... After him? So, yeah, are we going all the way to the bottom? 
I die back? I guess so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, make a uh, make a dex. Uh, well, yeah. Make an dex. athletics check, Artemis. Oh. I'm gonna okay. tap Artemis. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap Artemis. Keep going. It's like, please save him. Okay. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Did you give um, me guidance? Yes. Not that yes, it makes yes. a difference, but uh, oh, okay, okay, sure. Let's add a D four to that. I think this is gonna be terrible. Yeah, nine. 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 Okay. You go flying out towards him, oh. and he's kind of flopping and everything <laughs> like that. And you grab him, and he flips up over top of your face like a rug. <laughs> Oh my god. And it's just like like and now you're spinning and like tangled up with him in this moment and losing control of the broom. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. The this is rope, a bad idea. The rope is twenty feet out in the middle of this hole. Uh yeah, it's kind of centered you know, <laughs> midway out. What do I have to do to run and jump and grab it? Uh make a <laughs> athletic step for me. I'm so sorry, <laughs> I just thought it would be gentle. Uh, 21. 21. Two, two, two. Boom. Grab it. Can we swing? And are in on the road. In a dress. In a dress. That's right. Um, I will, as fast as I can, hand over hand down to try to get to them and untangle okay. this. You're not going to be able to climb fast enough to, like, go as fall, fast as they're falling. Um, right. Artemis, I would like you to make a... I almost wish you make like check. a... A broom handling check, right? It's almost like a vehicle <laughs> thing. Um, I, there's a level of strength needed here to like write it. So I'm going to say it's another athletics check to try and awesome. basically write everything and get him off Can her I face. Can I give her help by trying to get off of her face? <laughs> I... You can take the hat off. I don't know how much that would help. I, that, that I feel like would be the worst thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Girl purses wrapped around. Just like, I don't I mean, feel uh, like our Aranis helping is full advantage. I will say, I'll give you another D4 to add your roll for Aranis helping. Oh. Broker's okay. about to jump down. Okay. Oh my god. No. That's not terrible. This is terrible. Okay, okay, okay. So poorly thought Plus out. the D4. Okay, 18. 18. Okay. You kind of like peel what <laughs> you realize is like his knee off of your face. All right and kind of see what's happened. You see yourself spinning and you just, you like fall and you yeah. just see like Greta, like, oh? like as you go <laughs> past her and you put a break. You grab, yeah, you grab the room and break and got to pull out of the spin. And it, there's like a G force thing that like hurts it in the moment. Like you're having to hold on tight and then ugh, you kind of balance it out. And they're now just kind of floating, probably about 10 feet below Greta, probably about 30 feet below the, the top of the, um, of the whole, of the shaft. I'm here, I'm here like a screeching car, though it's like a broom, so like the same like kind of screeching car. Yep, basically. <laughs> Aronis, what the hell? That is 100% my bad. I, I thought, you know, paper goes down easily, and that is not what happened. Mm -mm. And I appreciate you, because uh, <laughs> I didn't know what was going to happen there for, uh, for a little bit, so. Um... Can you please take the cone off? Yeah, yeah. Uh, can I like wrap around the uh -huh. rope and then take the cone off? Yeah, there's this weird sensation where all of a sudden, like, poof, he's like right there behind you. Um, and the broom dips a little bit, but you can carry slowly, you can carry the two of you um, okay. back up top. Are you all right? We're good. My Bye. ego is destroyed. Okay. <laughs> but physically, yes. Uh, so, so you're now in the middle, Pride. Yeah. Just holding yeah. onto the rope. So where are we going? <laughs> I say to the top. Okay, yeah. As you get to the top, Peony just comes over. What and is like, can you I? Greg is like, I'm going down, and she just continues. Um, as you get to the top, Peony just comes over and is like, and kind of whispers, half whispers to you, Aranis, Can I borrow that? Uh. Sure. Yeah. That's... She puts it on. Grab, grabbing Peony, grabbing, grab. 
Like, not uh, to get nope grab. It's okay. I'm much lighter than him. I'll float. No, 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 no. Let's, let's, no, no, let's no, not no. test it out now. No. no. Oh, no. I got it. Fold her up that. like a paper airplane and send her to me, and I'll just <laughs> oh drag <my>. her down. <laughs> <laughs> throw. Oh, we haven't not tried mean. folding people yet with that. <laughs> no. Oh, no. I feel like that will go poorly. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna take the hat off. Grokus down. What? Do you, I mean, I can. I've been on the broom before. I, I, I oh believe, yeah, right? true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you can I carry. I gained so... that much weight, Ross. Okay, I'm, I'm a little oh, big. I... Okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I'll climb down the rope. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna jump to the middle and climb down. Uh, okay. uh, can can she fly me to the? There middle? are also other ropes and ropes with actual harnesses. Um, this was just Greta threw a rope and did her own thing, and now Pry has joined. Yeah. I mean, I guess my logic was like, if it doesn't look like we went down there, then they can just be like, oh, they must have left when we didn't yeah. see them. Yeah. Right. There is As at least to, one like, rope hanging in the middle, stuff. whether or not that. Right. But like, that could have been. Not. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Without harnesses, why would some random people just freehand down? We disappear and no will ever know. <laughs> <laughs> That's comforting. <laughs> uh, Pry, yeah, you feel right. the rope shaking. And you look down and you see that Greta is about maybe 50 feet below you mm -hmm. and is like doing that thing where she's kicking her legs and like getting the rope to start swinging. Yeah. And she's um, like, this is harder with you on there. <laughs> Do you want me to come down? Just or down or off of it. I can't get the momentum. Mm. Off. Oh, yeah. the bottom, Greta? <laughs> not like even no. close, but it's one of the offshoots. Uh, hey. climb, climb up. We'll go further away. Give her a longer arm for pendulum. Because, like, I can't get up farther because Aranus yeah. is on the rope, right? So. Uh, yeah, or did you jump out, Aranus, or did you fly out? You were talking about it, but did you actually do it? Oh, well, I thought I was, like... I had fallen down. Uh, yeah, she Arden picked you up on the broom. Me, and then, oh, we went back up? We did. I thought she just like flew. Oh, OK. Uh -oh. Yeah, then I guess I'll jump out uh, to the. <laughs> or just oh, well, if you're not on it, don't. Yeah, because <laughs> she said she's having trouble swinging. I thought you were on yeah. it. Yeah. I will stay off of it then. OK. I'll just, yeah, I'll climb up higher to give her more pendulum swing. Arms are burning at this I'm point, out of uh, going up and down the rope. But yeah, eventually, and you see below kind of watch and just very hard to see in the dim light, but you see it start to swing more. And then all of a sudden you see this little kind of dot of a person like whoop, and whoop, disappear into the wall. Oh, she just jumped off the end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what she does. <sighs> she jumps. Yeah. Yeah, 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 <laughs> She's yeah, very yeah, happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Acrobatic checks. Oh, cool, cool, cool. uh, yeah, how are we getting everybody down? Uh, with the and... brooms, I believe. I mean, it'd be a little slow, but we can really be the safest. If yeah. Barnabas, if you if you would be yeah. so kind, I can ferry people down. Yeah, yeah, yeah I great. Think it yeah, <clears throat> who wants to go first? I, I guess I'll, I'll go. go. I don't know if Grokus can go. I mean, my arms are getting tired, but. You oh, know. yes. Okay. Maybe we should get. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, yes. Maybe we're we'll down there first. Just rack focus to pry <laughs> in the middle. Like, <laughs> just like sweating. <laughs> Arm strength, come on, grip strength. Because it's a big rope. It's like this. Right. Like, I mean, yeah. I'm a climber, but like, yeah. please get me off of the rope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm taking pry first. <laughs> So you take her down, and eventually you see an opening in. Uh, it's, it's like a like a circular opening mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, in the wall, and you fly in a little bit, and it quickly levels out um, to it kind of like slopes up into a into a floor, um, and there are no torches in this one at the moment, um, but you kind of hit the ground, and you have dark vision. Do both of you have dark vision? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what you see is, first of all, you see Greta, um, who is kind of off to the side, and you start to see some sparks as she has flint and steel, and she's attempting to light a torch, but having a problem with it for some reason. Um, you just hear her like muttering under her breath. It sounds very angry, but you don't recognize the language. 
Um, and then as you look in a little bit more, you see a kind of a, like, you see stonework on the floor. Like it actually turns into actual flooring. Um, and in your initial reach of dark vision, you just begin to see the beginnings of like tables and chairs and whatnot in this kind of large open area. Okay. Um, pride, just to stay here. Of course. And I'm, yeah. And I just start bringing down the others like slowly. Okay. One by one, you all make your way down here, um, including Peony. Mm -hmm. until you are all in this room and uh Drip glow lighting up and if, if i see if greta's still struggling i'll touch i'll cast light as an actual character but on the uh, torch that uh she's trying to light so she's doing she's muttering and cursing and then all of a sudden boom, it's glowing come kind of looks at it looks over at you <laughs> licks one eyeball Ew. <laughs> just like looks at you I for like a long might... time and then breaches down picks up the torch uh, <laughs> just, just uh, trying to help I, I saw you have a little trouble so that might make it she kind of waves it around it's not going to go out no and I can I can do it again so no um, so long does it last I can an hour yeah so I can definitely touch it if I need to be because it lasts an hour so that's we're clever. good. I can I can do it again. So that's clever. And she just see how nice it. it is to come here with friends. Uh, and plus, with the drip glow too, following us as well. Yeah. So it should be like nice, well lit, but around us at least gives a very nice kind of. I like to think of it like a, like a low orange, like mm -hmm. ambient lighting around everything. Nice. Um, so you all make your way in, and you see a large room that is full of kind of very well ordered bunks and there are also tables and chairs in kind of a middle area and as you look you see that the, the room kind of goes out and then it goes up a bunch and you see almost like this massive step um that's 10 feet high and there's a ladder that goes up it and then you see more bunks kind of up top uh, as there's some sort of barracks room here um but are the everything tables dwarf size and the chairs are they everything is a little bit smaller uh than what a, a human elf person would 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 normally have um also everything is in great condition because most of it is metal um there's some wood here but a lot there's a lot of iron um and uh and whatnot that comprises the bunks and the tables and chairs um it's all very simply done but there's even some design there like the like the like the table leg is like a like a square metal post that then flares out a little bit at the end and there's like rune markings kind of carved uh and whatnot so everything's got just a little touch of craftsmanship to it uh while we're walking through can i just be looking up at the ceiling mm -hmm. just in case there's some, another crawling thing <laughs> uh make a perception check sweet and while I was doing that, can I do I know the runic marks? Like, do I would I be able to? Uh, these are decorative, yeah. Decorative, okay. 18. Uh, 18. Um, you do not currently see another creepy crawly. Cool. I think, I think this may have been designed for um, for dwarves, so you can see they're a little bit smaller than usual chairs, so. I think I'm safe to say that it was made for dwarves, or dwarves didn't make this. Seems that way. Uh, then the only way is deeper and up the steps, the ladder. Um, Grokus, as you're looking about, you do see not on every bunk, but every like maybe three bunks in amongst the 50 or so that are here. Um, you see boxes, like like foot locker type stuff um, at some of them. And I wanna <laughs> look at them respectfully. Um, are they, I guess they're locked me. Is there any way I can open it or just kinda? Go ahead and uh, make an investigation check. Investigation, okay. Can I guidance myself? Is that a, is that you a can. thing? Yep. Okay. 
so definitely will. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, 18, a zero FSK, so 18. Yeah. You go up to one of them and you kind of fiddle with it a little bit and um, the passage of time has, you know, as well as dwarven things are made, passive time has has wreaked some havoc on this because the little lock uh, kind of area at the front um, just kind of breaks off and falls to the ground as you lift a little bit. When you do that, a big layer of dust comes off, uh, starts to come off a little bit of the top, and you see, um, still very dusty and hard to, hard to make out, but you see a rune um, carved in the middle, kind of on the top of the lid. It's in, so it, it's open. What, what is a rune? Rune to defend anything, or what is the? Yeah, you 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 brush it off a little bit, um, and you see a name that is carved here on top. Um, you read it, and it is Farud, um, spelled F I R O U D, in the common tongue. But it's um, in dwarves, right? It's a dwarvish name. Yep, and you would know this is like a like a proper name, like Frank uh, or or whatnot. Or would I? Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, man. You lift it up and look inside, and a lot of everything inside is kind of rotted to time. Any, any, there, there's some, some cloth. Uh, what would probably be clothing or bedding and whatnot in there, and that's, you know, just kind of fallen apart uh, and has holes in it from bugs getting in and whatnot. You see, um, a couple tools, uh, like a chisel and a hammer. That are in there that are also um you know pretty kind of pitted and 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 not in great shape um and you see a, a leather bound book that is also just in really rough shape i definitely will um grab the book see if i can very carefully it's not trying to make sure like trying to keep it so it's not going to um fall apart any further yeah but I will definitely get it out, and I, um, as I do, but as soon as I see the name, I'm going to say a quick prayer, just hoping that he was able to find balance and whatever came next and whatever uh, befell of him. But um, I'll carefully take it out. Okay. You take it out, and it's very brittle. Um, you kind of un start to unwind the leather strap that's kind of wrapped around to tie it close, and it breaks off. Um, and kind of gently crease the book open. Some of the paper is already kind of like breaking at the edges and whatnot. Um, but you begin, you see scrawled runes inside and at peeking in just real quickly, you just see the makings of a journal. Um, what you see very quickly, just kind of looking the first couple of sentences that you, that you read are, um, you know, worked a double shift today my back is not thanking me for it. Uh, we have found one new vein. I sure hope that, and then it goes to another page. Is it a uh, different blow, but I sure hope that kind of gently, if I can see it, the next page. Yeah, kind of crease it open and, and you know, sure hope that this pays off uh, in my coffers next week um i've been sending as much home as i can but more is always better and i'd definitely be reading this aloud to everybody as well so i'm definitely reading this aloud as i flip flip to the last page see what the last entry was so I flip very down to the they last are page. coming <laughs> dot 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 <laughs> <laughs> Beware. <laughs> drums, Beware. drums in the deep. <laughs> drums uh, in the deep. <laughs> uh, the last page reads, I am getting so tired of this mine. It seems to never end. We keep finding treasures, but what, goods are, what good are treasures if you never get out of a hole to spend them in? And then there's kind of like a little pause like 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 a, a kind of a chunk where he doesn't write and then kind of scrawled a little bit is like i shouldn't complain so much another day tomorrow and then signed 
with that same name. Mm. Mm. You okay, Grokus? Yeah, I'm good. I'm in a moment. I'm I'm fine. Okay. Deeper. We've come so, this far. Yeah. So is this? There's a tunnel that goes out of this room, like not the one we came in. Or best you can tell, the tunnel, like the 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 shaft continues down, um, and then this was like an offshoot. Um, and you look around and you don't see like another tunnel um, coming off of this one. Like the room is vast, but it. You know, at least upon first inspection, you're not seeing like another room or another tunnel to go through. Like you would be going back out oh. to the main shaft and then. Yeah. Okay. If I can, before we leave, I want to. If I can just quickly get the names of all the if I of all the containers that are left, because I'll just quickly write them down in my prayer book. Yep. Um. So you had so there there were three. Um. There was Farood, um, Belton which is another male, um, traditionally male name, and then Shivar, which is more of a traditionally female name. You'll take all of them down if they have any um, uh, journals to I'll take those lightly and just kind of wrap them, wrap them up. You look in there, one is completely empty, uh, Belton's, um, and then in Shivar's there are some more kind of ratty old cloths and whatnot, um, a couple of jeweler's tools, um, but no um, no writing or, or manuscripts or anything. Uh, after looking through a few of these, does it look like, can we tell if people were like taking things out in a hurry and leaving or if everything is just left in there because they like disappeared or something? Make an investigation check. Wouldn't mind from the get-go kind of notice that too, because no one to opened with the first one didn't seem to be too disorderly. Yeah. Uh, investigation, yeah, that's a nine. A nine. Hard to tell. It's it's been a long time, and things are in general disrepair just from the passage of time. Right. What do you guys want to do? I still want to go to the bottom. I think that's where anything we're looking for will be. I say we keep going down until we find another room. I mean, I we can heed the wisdom of Farood. I mean, what good's going deeper if we can't get back out? You know, maybe we are those assigned for, for us. I mean, but if you guys want to, I'll definitely go down as well. I just do think we just need the wisdom that um, he left in his journal. But either or. So if we're, if we're going, that's fine. We can go. I mean, we're not going to get lost in here, are we? We've yeah. got Greta. Oh, true. Yeah. I was going to say Greta's. Yeah. She is. <laughs> she is over at the side with the torch, making shadow puppets. <laughs> and just like playing with it and like you can see her like moving it from like eyeball to eyeball and like just really enamored with this ever light torch that does that's not hot to touch uh awesome. greta you want to go to the bottom Chuck starts like ah, i can go deeper i don't i've never been to the bottom bottom i don't you know if the rope it? goes that far hey, have you ever been to the end of the rope Almost to it. Got delayed in the room with all the shiny stuff. Uh, what? Where's Where's that room? What's it's that down. room? It's down. <laughs> I think we go down. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why you'd want to, lad. <laughs> I want the construct. <laughs> okay. 
you all make your way out of the barracks. And there's the rope in the middle. Obviously, Artemis can carry one person. Um, what's the plan for scouting to the next? Uh, did Greta did Greta tell us where the next opening was? Uh, not yet. Um, if you ask her, she says, um, oh, there's a couple. There's one down on the other side. I didn't go in there because they were working. They had their stuff in there. And then there's one farther, farther down below, straight below. I think farther down below. But how we get there is the question. So what she's describing essentially is if you have a central kind of shaft that goes down, um, the offshoots are staggered on either side, um, almost like ladder rungs um, that kind of go like this. And yeah, it's like one on this side and then one on the other and then one on this side and one on the other. So next below you would be on the other side of the of the shaft. Beanie, can I see that the hat? She had yes. Yeah, I was gonna put it on pedal and see what happened. <laughs> but I don't want to hurt her. Okay, here you go. Sorry. We'll be we'll, we'll try that afterwards. When we're safely above, we'll we'll get we'll let them try it on. Um, what we can do is like we did before. Maybe someone could wear this entire rope, and then as Artemis is bringing them down, we can bring another person as well to kind of speed it up too. Because we, we did that before, right? Like, we tied a rope, yeah. I think, mm -hmm. and still not, so we can definitely... Yep, we did that. Yeah, we did that, yeah. I'll go first. Boof. And she puts it on her head. <laughs> Grab before it blows off, and then get the rope, and just kind of lightly tie it around. Yep. And then... All right, so it's Artemis, Peony as a paper, and who else? I guess since I'm holding the rope, I guess I'll be... Okay. I guess I'll be on the first, yeah. yeah. All right, okay. so the three of you head down and are you heading down and across to the next closest one or down farther to the one that's directly below you uh... we, we, I think because uh, Aronis wanted to go to the one with the shiny stuff right so I think we'd be going to that one first okay yeah. so farther yeah. down Farther down, yeah. so as you pass by the one that's across um, each one of these is about 50 feet difference um, so as you pass across the one, you look in briefly, um, you can see some carts and kind of equipment, like excavation equipment, pickaxes, things like that, kind of all set in that area. So they've been doing some work in that one, whatever might be in there. As you continue farther down, um, you watch as you get to the point where there is the next entrance. Um, but then you look down and you see the rope only goes about 15 feet past that before it ends. Mm. But the tunnel is dark as it continues farther and farther down past the Drift road. globe, drift globe, drift globe. <laughs> nope, nope, pass nope. The, I'll pass cast where the tail if I need to. Yep. <laughs> I'm close to casting it, so we'll... Um, you fly into the next tunnel mm -hmm. and dismount, and this one does not open up into a big cavern. It is a long tunnel, probably about eight foot by eight foot, kind of squarish. Uh, that just goes. And you hear behind you plop, 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 as Greta finishes coming down the rope and then begins the process of swinging eventually whoop, and leaps and leaps from a distance. Like she covers like 20 oh feet gosh. and then poof, lands. That's awesome. It's like, this is where all the shiny stuff was. 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 Well, there might be more. I took some of it. What, what was this? Well, we'll talk whenever it gets down here. We'll wait. Yeah. So just like before, I'll start bringing them all down. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody else you, use uh, the cone? I'll yeah. give you the cone. I was going to give you the cone back. Yeah, you yeah. I see the line it back. I'll yeah. use the cone. Okay. <laughs> um, sure? Well. <laughs> I don't like the cone. Has he lost his cone privileges? <laughs> <laughs> no more cone for you. <laughs> I mean, it is his cone technically, though. So, uh, yeah. I mean, you can't it use is, your own item. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The rest of you get down and eventually converge in this darker, squarer, more tunnel-like tunnel. Like tunnel. Um, Greta begins plop, plop, plopping ahead of everybody. 
And as the drift globe comes in and you look about, um, you see kind of these insets in the wall as you go that are maybe a foot high by like six inches, eight inches wide. And as you look, you see old uh, brass kind of candle holders there. And some of them even have old burnt down candles. Um, and these are kind of spaced out along either side all the way through. Um, all dark and quiet now, um, but at one point probably lit up so that people could do work uh, along the way. You can this see... is just like a straight mm -hmm. tunnel. It's a straight tunnel that all of a sudden you're walking through and you sense a difference and you look up and realize that there's a chunk again about eight foot by eight foot that now goes straight up now it continues forward but there's like a straight up version um of the tunnel that goes up out of sight uh i feel like this is a good moment to ask uh did you all encounter any traps when you were in your various other dwarven ruins any Artemis, Aranis, Crocus? No, no traps. No um, traps. And uh, a machine, per se, but it wasn't really a trap, though. Just... Would you be able to recognize any mm. traps if there were them? Or uh, were some, uh, Crocus? Mm. I mean, I can try, like I said, I don't remember very much, but I can definitely. Try. I don't know if my people were like, you know, great, but I, I can give it a try at the very least. Yeah. So I guess I'll do perception for, for traps. Do I see any traps? <laughs> like a perception <laughs> check. Oh boy. Guidance. <laughs> I'm just like, I got this. Ew. Oh no. Well, what is that? Okay, that's a nine. 12 and this is what would this be is investigation what am i what would this uh, be again? perception okay thank okay oh, yeah, so I'll, okay i'll take that okay good so that's gonna be a i can't do math oh 19. 19. Our perception is awesome <laughs> oh. look about and it it feels oddly bare and quiet and you don't see any tools or anything but it's very clean as well like there's not a lot of rubble in this area um and so you start beginning specifically to like expect the floor and the ceiling and the walls looking for any sort of trap and aren't finding anything um and grocus just from your cursory knowledge um from what you remember growing up and 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 from you know just what you've been able to find in your in your quest to learn more about your people the need for there to be a trap here may not have been very strong. This was more than likely their workplace, um, not necessarily their their you know their uh, their vaults or anything like that. So you feel fairly confident that at least in this spot there aren't any you know, malicious traps. They were just working, lad. I, I don't think they were concerned with anything else. They were just they were just working. They were just. Trying to make some money, trying to send some things back. So, yeah, I think we'll be okay. Awesome, uh, Greta, show me the shiny stuff. Let's get going, and she pop, 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 ahead. And as you all go deeper and deeper in, eventually, all of a sudden, with from the light of the drift globe, you catch a glimmer up in one of the walls, and you notice that the walls have and the flooring has gone a little more rough. Uh, here. Um, it's still cut out into this shape, but all of a sudden, like, the floor feels a little more uneven. You look down, and there's no more, like, tile, like, kind of stonework done. This tunnel, um, it's almost like they cut the tunnel, and then they came back through and started, like, clearing, like, cleaning it up, um, and you've left that area um, where the, the road gets rough again. You walk a little closer to where that gleam was, and look up into kind of the top left corner of the wall and there's something sparkly kind of inset into the into the stone oh. I mean Artemis you want to fly around us up to see if you can it's probably it's probably seven eight feet off the ground uh -oh. so a little bit out of reach but yeah 
Thanks. Can we tell what it is? Uh, make a perception check. It's a little bit of a distance to look here in the dim light. Ooh, that's a mad 20. All right. Ooh. You look Taking up. Of the night. Yeah, <laughs> you look up, Aranis, and you're, a smile breaks across your face as you recognize a raw diamond. <laughs> I knew this would be a good idea. <laughs> I told you, Brokus. He's like, I found uh, nothing. Nothing <laughs> 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 there. Fuck it. Uh, yeah, if somebody gives me a lift, I can I can grab I'll, it. I'll boost. Mm. Uh, you right, boost yeah, up I there know. and get on it, and I mean, it's inset <laughs> into the stone. Like, it's uh, not just... Can I take out my dagger and try to... Like, uh-huh. hurry, lad, I mean, I'm strong, but... Around it. Yeah, make, a, make an attack roll, I'd say. <laughs> attack roll, okay. Um... That's another nat 20. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm using Break. this dice from you now on. Yeah, it was meant to be. <laughs> so, oh. ah, damn, on anything but a nat 20, that dagger was breaking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no way. You can't just stab rock oh with a dagger God. and not expect some Yes, I can. <laughs> on a nat 20, <laughs> Yes, I you can. can on a nat 20. So what I'm going to say happens is you look and you go, you're about to start chipping, and then you're like, well, that's a bad idea. And then you look and you see a little line a little sliver kind of a of, of crack and you slam the dagger in there pound it a couple times and then just kind of wedge it a little bit and you feel everything shift a little bit and so you begin working on that it's not an immediate process but you begin kind of clearing out little bits of stone and everything and eventually um you are able to excise a like a chunk that's about maybe softball size um that is of, of stone, but then within there, there is oh. a raw diamond. Um, you're not sure how big. Um, you'll need to clear off all the the extra the extra rock. Um, but yeah, you got it out. Lad, are you good? Oh my gosh, I'm. Oh, I'm. We so can hold you up. I mean, but uh, you. Yeah, I'm gonna hop down. Okay. <sighs> uh, the rest of you looking about. It's not everywhere, but you see various little sparkles throughout the tunnel. And it just keeps going straight. Mm-hmm. Ooh. How All much this... diamond do you need, Brokus? Yeah. That's a valid question. We can go to the other tunnel, grab the tools, and get a solid... I don't know <laughs> if I want any of it, to be honest. I mean, look, it didn't do... It didn't do... Any of these three people didn't draw it any good. Didn't do. I mean, yes, I can definitely use some for, for a few spells, but. So, it's whatever, whatever we can get. Uh, I'm gonna pocket this one. <laughs> um, I, it's this big of a rock. So. I'll put it in my backpack. Pocket. Or, 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 <laughs> just got like huge sh- thing in my pocket. Yeah, to walk it out of my what? The foreman, what is that? Nothing, it's a rock. <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> uh, what sort of spells do you need the diamonds for, Grokus? Well, it's more of a, a feeling. I mean, I think I can, if balance is disrupted, I may have a means of, of bringing someone back if, if it turns out that it needs to be not so much reversed, but just someone undone. Um, and from praying to it's another feeling of uh, maybe being able to not scry per se, but kind of, it's it's hard to say. It's almost like I'd be able to, to see somewhere that I've been before, kind of like just to, if I can get some sort of like a glass made with it, it's almost, almost, I guess it's like, almost like I'm clairvoyant almost and kind of see um, different areas I may have been in or even here in those locations as well, so. Just, oh. yeah. Even though it seems this place makes you feel sad, those sound like uh, abilities that could be very helpful to you, yes? And yeah. help you take care of the people you care about. So even though being here right now makes you sad, that doesn't mean that being here is bad, right? No, I guess that's... 
That's that's very true. That makes yeah, you're right. I apologize. That was uh, not the uh, <laughs> yeah. That's you don't have to apologize for being sad, but we are all trying that to hurts. help you, I guess. <laughs> Aronis is the opposite of sad. Aronis <laughs> is like, yes, diamonds. He's already off like in the next run. Diamonds. <laughs> running up and down the tunnel. <laughs> With this one and that one and that one. Does anyone have any bag? We have a bag. Yeah, Looney Tunes, thing. like dollar signs over your eyes. <laughs> and it's like an anime, anime, like montage style thing where you're like, zip, 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 yeah. zip, 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 And then like back to the group. <laughs> 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 we need a bag of holding now. I Do have, I have a bag two. Holding. Yeah. But no, but no, Fry, you're you know you're you're right though, and I and uh, I I need to remember I can definitely help keep the balance with with these items. So that's that's true. Maybe um carry on these three like um by doing something you know to to help. So thank you. That's yeah. But, um, but we're not here for me though we're here for we're looking for a tool right we were here, yes. we're here looking for yes i mean i know i know ron if you're looking at that i'm pretty you know i think, <laughs> I think tool. i'm, I'm, I'm right. down here ron i mean not I diamond tool yes <laughs> Got you. yeah um, but I, I guess can we can we grab some more diamonds do we see any more can we spend a little time getting some diamonds it'll take some time and not all of them are as easily removed as the one that ron had um but I would say with spending even just another 15 minutes here, you come away with two more chunks that have at least some Take sort it. of diamond in them. Now, they vary in size. You know, they might be anywhere from, you know, uh, a ball bearing to at the most, maybe like half a golf ball um, or oh, something man. like that. But I mean, and in raw form. Yeah. That's so good with that. Um, if it's helpful, I do have jeweler's tools. Um, oh, yeah. Wow. Well, hey. Yes. Yeah, I'll be casting guidance. So who's ever trying to get like I'll be there like casting guidance <laughs> to help. Yeah, the initial getting the big chunk of rock out of the the wall, the jeweler's tools are not going to be so helpful for. But the getting the diamond out of that rock, uh, you know, with enough yeah. time, you're going to have exactly what you need to be able to do that. Yes. Cool. Perfect. Right. Ooh. And are we going to tell the foreman? I mean, I guess this isn't, well, I guess we don't need to, but it just, hmm. Uh, just we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah. Um, have we seen any construct looking things at all? You haven't, but you also know that you haven't gone down every tunnel yet. Um, so, yeah, but not, not down in this area. Go ahead and make a. Um, well, yeah, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lead you on too much. Mm. <laughs> I mean, what was that? Uh -huh. Or you can just make a. No, no, it's fine. An investigation check, <laughs> perception check. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. You said that like when we looked up in the like, the chimney, as it were, like we couldn't see good. anything. Like it was just. It just dark. went into darkness, past your darkness. Actually, yeah. I did want to try something uh, with that. Um, I'm going to go up to Greta. Um, I promise I'll give it back. Can I borrow that torch thing? That's my torch. Just just for a minute. I'll give it right back. Uh, collateral. Uh, I'll, I'll, let, I'll, let the, I'll, let, I'll let Greta play the drip globe. I'll let Greta play the drip globe. I'll kind of bring it down and be like... Jack grabs that and he has the torch off. And the torch is lit, like it has the... Yeah, it's got yeah, light it's got on the... Light. Yep, it. Yeah, I got light on it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, wait, how heavy is the torch? Uh, Pretty normal light, torch I mean, weight. It's like yeah. a couple pounds. Uh, I don't know how much my servant can carry. Um, Unseen servant? No, my homunculus oh, servant. Oh, yeah. That's a good question. Uh, he can carry I, small objects. I can turn. I can cast light on like the object. Uh, on the a torch would be itself. a small object. Yeah. Do, do you need oh, me you to can cast, cast light on yes, on Kingsley. Yeah. Do you need me to 
to do that. Yeah. I can, yeah. If you don't, if you don't you know, mind, so come up, I'll give uh, it a touch and you have a lit like drone a light. just floating. Yes. Us. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna tell him like, all right, buddy, fly up there, and uh, if you haven't gotten to the top in a couple minutes, come on down. We just want to see what's up there. So I send him up. All right. Um, he goes up and eventually disappears. Even the we don't light oh spell because the light gives off sixty feet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, eventually, we don't see any any openings or anything. Uh, in the initial bit that you can see, no, it just keeps going straight up. You do see a couple glints of diamonds as well as he goes up, but he just follows instructions and he keeps going and then oh. disappears from from sight eventually. Malachi, what's your, what's your favorite color? Because that's, that's the color of the light. So whatever your favorite color is, oh, it's that's that a color. Question. Green. It's a green light. Awesome. <laughs> it's cool. You said this uh, chimney is how, like, how big it's, across? It's, it's as if the tunnel went straight uh -huh. up. It's eight uh, by eight. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. big for a chimney. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Make a make a someone make a perception check just as as mm. he's going up there. To get any additional Not details? Really climbable. Come on, that twenty. No, but thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, that's gonna be a thirteen for me too. Thirteen. I got a uh, sixteen. A sixteen? Oh. No, sorry, nineteen. Nineteen. 19. Yes. Yeah. Um, Malachi, one thing that you notice is that there are um, almost like I don't like almost like incisions in the wall going up. Like they're not like handholds. They're not like a ladder that's cut in. They're just like these like the reason you think of them as strange is that they're these kind of like semi straight, like almost like puncture points in as you go. And they're kind of haphazard. Do you tell us this? Yeah. Um, Do you guys see those slashes on the wall, slits, whatever they are? How how big was that? Um, Arana Sonardo, so big was that the one that we saw? Do you think? Because remember, it could climb on the walls. Yeah. So I wonder. Oh, that could, yeah. That could be it. Something, or at least something like it. I feel like. Yeah, yeah I it agree. definitely looks like something was scraping on the walls up there. Climbing up, yeah. I think whatever we're looking for could be uh, wherever yeah. those marks lead. Um, Kingsley is not you're, returned. You're, you're, you, that is going to uh, it's not going to be okay. That it was pretty powerful, so it knows to stay out of danger, right? That the little the little he, thing that you it's going to be a beacon going up there, so. Yeah, he does have like, I mean, he, he'll dodge danger and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I said for him to come back after a couple minutes if he hasn't reached the top. So, yep. Yeah. Five mm -hmm. minutes goes by, 10 minutes goes by. Um, he doesn't um, return. The walls of this are sort of like, like rough, like natural stones. Still. Yeah, like, the walls going yeah. up are rough. Yep. And how many and how frequently are there punctures and slits? Sorry, I'm in rock climber mode now. Um. <laughs> uh, they're fairly well spaced apart. Um, yeah. They're they're farther apart than a person's wingspan would be, um, a normal human sized person. Um, but there are like other pits and like sure, knobs yeah. on the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Potentially climbable. We can always. Would would it be enough for us to fit through on? On the broom, is it wide enough? I mean, it's eight feet. It's, yeah, it's the same size as the tunnel. So, it's like elevator can... with the broom. Just mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, if you, we could definitely because mm -hmm. that so seems to be. Try. I'm willing. All right, I'm I'm down to give it a go. So, I'm here for it. Right. I think we get the piece and get out of here. All right, so Artemis, you want to? Uh, uh, yeah. I'd like to find Kingsley if I can. Yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to go first? Then I mean, since 
I know yeah, Kinsey's up if, there. If so. You guys don't mind. Yeah. yeah, no, of course. Yeah, can I put the cone on and like hang below them no. or something? They go up. <laughs> I'll put you on as a king. I'll tie. <laughs> tie his, his arms, arms around arms you. Arms <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you. Okay. So Artemis, right. Malachite, and Aranis as a as a cape. <laughs> okay. Yep. As a cape. As a cape. As a cape. <laughs> All right. Are you billowing like your cloak of billowing? I'm totally billowing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just flapping like the crazy arm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I need to prepare the right spells for this. Ugh. Yeah. I was, was going to say, can uh, if it was only was tomorrow, I can maybe wait. I reach out to you. So just just be careful. I mean, we'll wait down here, but um, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. What's the worst that could happen? How fast are you going up? That was the worst that could happen. Saying that <laughs> is the worst that can. Happen. Well, no, I was just asking because I was going <laughs> to like follow behind, maybe. Uh, oh, yeah. definitely faster than you can climb. Okay. They'd be going even at half speed. Um, yeah. Because it's yeah. 60 feet normally. And if you're over bare, overladen, it's like 30 feet per mm -hmm. round. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. And then as I go up, I'm going to say a quick prayer to enter a uh, casting bless because it's for you guys, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to cast bless to say a quick prayer to make sure that um, just we're under God and youth and balance as they, as they go up. All right. Okay. Sweet. The three of you lift off and begin heading up. Um, any source of light with you? Ooh. I've got. Oh, I'll, I'll recast. I'll recast so. light. I'll recast light since I know King's been gone a while. I'll definitely just recast light on something for them. Whatever. If anyone has like a torch and they're holding, I'll cast light again because I figure King's might not need at this point right now. So, uh, can we cast it on something small that we can hide yeah. if we need to? Yeah, it can be on anything. So, if you have an object, lad, just let me, just let me touch it. I can definitely give it a glow. Do you have anything? Uh, can I just pull out like a coin? Yeah, like a so, little gold coin. So, go and touch the coin. What's your favorite color again? Uh, Aranis' favorite color. Uh, ba -ba 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 let's go with orange. Orange, so nice, uh, nice deep orange glow. That's what she said last time. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> continuity. <laughs> so, all right, the orange light lifts off, and you all begin ascending. Um, it gives off sixty feet of light around you. Is that sixty foot radius? I think I think it's total? less. I, I think it's less. Honestly, let me see. So it's a brightly in a twenty foot radius oh, and a dim light radius was twenty foot. So. So twenty of like dim, but twenty of like bright. So sure. Okay. Forty total. Yeah. And th is it radius or diameter? So it is um uh, radius. Okay. So twenty yeah. feet in front of you. Yeah. Yes, radius. Yes, okay. radius. Yeah. Great. All right. So you begin lifting off and going up, and you see more glints. You see more slash marks, uh, and as you go up for thirty feet, and then sixty feet. Uh, you notice that all of a sudden there's a ceiling and the tunnel continues off a different direction. I think we wait here and ferry the rest of the people up. <laughs> so I did tell Kingsley to come back when he got to the top. Yep. This is yeah. not a good sign. Okay. This is not all a right. good sign at all. I, I very much understand your instructions. Yes. Okay. Just making sure. Oh my god. <laughs> Dead. Oh, 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 oh boy. <laughs> Decisions, guys. I say get everybody up here. And let's have a look, see, because now we gotta find Kingsley. We can't just leave him down here, so. Um, are you going up to be able to look down the tunnel or are you just kind of like hanging out below and like seeing that there's a tunnel up there? I think we should hide the light. Yeah, I yeah, agree. I put the coin away. Okay, goes dark. Can you just raise this up so I can peek over the, yes. the edge there? Yeah, raise them up a little bit. Okay, uh, make a perception check, Malachite. And you have bless. I don't know if that. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. What's bless? Sorry. 
Um, uh, saving. Well, no, it's not for a saving throw. So never mind. The one oh. thing. Darn. Okay. But flavor wise, um, Anders with you. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a uh, fifteen. A fifteen. So with your dark vision from your goggles, you look down, and you see about ten feet into another cut tunnel. Again, eight by eight. Um, you see something kind of on the ground in the middle of the stonework and you peer a little closer and you see the mangled broken metallic form of Kingsley just sitting there kind of all twisted and deformed oh god (laughs) um do I see anything else you stop and you watch and then you just hear this low and then you see in your mind almost like a memory you see this image of a large diamond that is about 60 feet down just sticking out of the rock just like just like sticking out of the rock like the biggest freaking diamond you've ever seen just they're easily plucked for the taking and you just like yeah it's it's right down there it's 60 feet mm. but i heard that mhm um all right so kingsley's up there but somebody messed him up um which is fine as long as I can get the jewel back that he's made out of. But uh, there's also something growling up there. So I don't know what it was. Uh, okay. Um, I. Uh, oh, God. I don't know. Um, I think we have to get everybody up here. Um, I can try to stealth forward and maybe see what it is. Uh, and if actually, uh, if you uh, if you drop us both off up here, I can. Well, I mean, I can't cast pass without a trace on everybody then, but. Um, if you're pretty stealthy, then maybe. Maybe I'll fine. just hide and then. Yeah, we just don't go closer until everybody else is here. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's good. We'll just hang around the lip, <laughs> around the edge. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Be really quiet going back down. <laughs> <laughs> this is a terrible idea. <laughs> the two of you. <laughs> They're mangled. Climb up. Right, <laughs> we're mangled. <laughs> <laughs> two of you climb up into the tunnel and Artemis you begin to float back down it's about a hundred feet total that this shaft goes up is there anything we can like hide behind it is tunnel okay then I'd just like to flatten myself against the ground and pull my hood my cloak over okay. my body yep same okay um so just full war like you can make stealth checks yes but you're in the middle of an open tunnel so you know those stealth checks the effectiveness of them even with something like that's without a trace without anything to hide behind i'm just letting you know now the effectiveness of that is going to be very limited so are you casting it uh, uh, no, we're we'll gonna get some everybody's okay. up. Yeah, go ahead so, and go ahead and roll stealth checks then, because your intention okay. is to not be seen. I get an advantage. Oh, Artemis, you're able to uh, rock it down pretty quick s- without them. Yeah. Seventeen oh, yeah. plus. Would the hat help if they're like flat? Like, would that make him harder to see if they're like flat against the rock? If they, Potentially. If he has a hat on. <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'll rug. I'm a rug. I'm a rug. And cover myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do both. Uh, so 17 plus 5 is uh, 22. Okay. I rolled a 7. 
and I have a zero stealth, so. Okay. So you try oh, to flatten God. yourself a little bit. Kingsley is there within stunning. 10 feet, so you can go over and get him if you want. Uh, since I'm not able to be super quiet, I'm going to wait. Okay. You all wait there, and then all of a sudden, Malachi, you get that... Ugh, that there, there's something, like, there's a big-ass diamond, like, yeah. just just a few feet forward into the darkness. It's there. If you yeah. just get a little light over there, you'll see it immediately. Sounds legit. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, you know, you, you probably saw, like, a glimmer of it from the, the residual light before. Stay put. Yeah. Okay. I'm not really motivated by diamonds necessarily, so just kind of. Okay. Artemis, it's like, you well, get down I know to it's the there, bottom. but I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna go after it because I self preservation is okay. Too strong. Artemis, you get down to the bottom. Um, who are you grabbing next, and what are you telling them? Oh, I'm telling them. I'm everything oh. that just went down and. Can I man? Can I manage both of them? Very slowly, like be pry, pry and, and Brokus. You're gonna be going yeah. pretty I'll, slow. I'll be, yeah. or I'll be, I'll. Oh, did you get the dunce cap back? What do we? I mean, we probably would have given that back. You so didn't say so. I, didn't I, I, say I put it on my head. No. Yeah. Okay. You guys go. Just come back for me. I don't want to slow down too much. I mean, if they need help, they'll be. There's Greta as well, and Peony. And Peony, yeah. 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 They're smaller, so take them. You can take them. I'm pretty sure. I'm heavier you than... could get Greta and Peony on the same one, no problem. Okay, okay. so I'll take, I'll take them first. Then. Okay, you grab them and you begin going up, still at half speed, but but heading on up. Okay. And as you wait in the darkness, Aranus and Malachite, all of a sudden you just hear... Mm-hmm. And then... <laughs> and you see coming into the edges of your dark vision a shape that almost fills the tunnel top to bottom side to side of this eight foot by eight foot tunnel rushing for you you on four legs that you can barely see behind a large Mouth that is open and full of teeth that are probably anywhere from 8 to 12 inches long a piece. And the mouth just opens and you just hear... Okay. Can I get a, can I get a spell off? You can shit, get a spell shit, off. Shit, shit, oh shit. This thing okay. rushes you. Through the shit. Um, shit. Okay. Disintegrate, uh, okay. please. Disintegrate. Disintegrate. <laughs> I'm gonna, okay, this is gonna be. I'm gonna stay up there. This is probably a terrible idea. Um, <laughs> oh, God. I'm gonna cast uh, Vortex Warp. Okay. Um, so it says a magical, you magically twist space around another creature you can see within range. Yep. Range is 90 feet. Yep. You <sighs> okay, so it must succeed on a constitution save. Um, and it's teleported to an unoccupied space of my choice that I can see within range. Okay. What is your uh, save DC? 15. Okay. Uh, it passes Dang with, it. A to- with a total of a 20. Mm. All right. So you reach out and you begin to twist space around it and you see the jaw twist around almost as if you were turning the head and it gets ready and then it just and it almost like flips around and like takes the momentum and the whole body flips and tumbles in that moment you see tumbling with it this massive head that's like half the size of its entire body these four stocky legs but then also these long tentacles that whip off of the body and just flip around with it as it writes itself and continues to rush forward towards you 
And that's where we're going to end tonight's session. <laughs> oh my god. And I'm on the ground, y'all. I'm on the ground, okay? We I'm are... stuck alone on the ground. No, I'm I on the ground told... with you. I... Yep. You didn't, you didn't go either? Okay. No, yep. she took it's... Greta and Peony. Greta and Peony oh. and Artemis are in the air halfway up the tunnel. Oh, probably about, you know, 30, 50 feet. And the two of you are at the top. Like, we're going to have, we're going to need a vertical battle map, y'all. I the told two... you to the left. I told you the wisdom. I was like, nope. The two best oh. suited to melee are on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yep. Well, this if you count good. Uranus being flat on his face, he's on the ground as well. So mm. there go. Oh, boy. Okay, about to get mangled as well. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. Think this, this we got those diamonds. <laughs> yeah, we got those. <laughs> we got diamonds. We got diamonds, so. There had to be a monster in here somewhere. Friend. Yeah. Oh, it's very man. good that I didn't get the visions because Aranis would have been say, I like... just walked right up to it and <laughs> would have died. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Woo! Well, same time, same place next week to see what happens. I can't wait till next week, though. Uh huh. Uh huh. Play. Fine. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. We uh, are excited to hit next episode and see what happens with this uh, little little itty bitty encounter uh, with the group here in the Dwarven Mine. Uh, thanks for joining us and make sure to follow all the socials and we'll see you here next time at the First Watch. Bye.